So the 2018 Honda Odyssey is back about a week later. Uh, the owner found a used BCM on eBay. Uh, the part number was kind of uh, a little confusing, but it came from an EXL, which is leather model. So they're very specific. And here is um, the old module, so I took it out. Uh, it's it's buried under there, um, under the dash. So you, you have to take off the plastic cover here, and then unbolt a couple of fuse boxes. And it's it's in that cave. So this is the original BCM. So it has seven connectors. You see how many pins that is. And this module is about as big as my hand. Um, I would say from an engineering standpoint that's way too much stuff in a small package <laughs> if you know what I mean there's a lot of electronics buried in there if something goes wrong the whole car you know just screws up <clears throat> so I wouldn't be surprised if this unit is failing there's the part number 38800THR A514M1 uh, yep probably made in Mexico there's no more Japanese parts and Hondas, I guess. And here's the eBay special. Identical part number, so that's good. All, all we have to do, according to the OEM service in instructions, is plug it in. The car will obviously not start. We need to register the keys, and then should be good to go. So let's, I'm going to plug this in, we'll get the scanner out and see if we can do that in mobilizer registration process. Alright, so BCM is installed, battery is connected. We got two fobs right here that the customer wants to program. And let's see what happens when we push the button. So even if we fold the, hold the fob near the button, the car is immobilized. Just start hold remote near start button. Okay, <clears throat> that's um, let's look up the OEM instructions and see if the scanner can talk to this thing with the you know, with the vehicle off basically. USA Can it talk to the car? Does this vehicle have a keyless access remote? Yes. Place smart key in your engine stop start button, plus button with your hand or smart key. Well, obviously that doesn't work. Okay. Don't release the button until the ignition is turned on. Fail. Unit registration or inspection. What is PCU? Let's look up OEM service info, but it said that the vehicle, you can't turn the ignition on in this state, so how's the scanner supposed to talk to it? So, if the body control module is replaced, do the keyless access system registration. If the original body control module is installed, confirm that all system works 
properly. The body control module has, has a component of the immobilizer system. The body control module must be registered when the body control module is replaced or the vehicle will not start. You're right. So the instructions here say, you know, after installation, keyless access system register, body control module update. And the keyless access system registration, if you replace the body control module with steering light, the vehicle will not turn to the on mode. Follow the registration procedure of the corresponding unit. Connect the HDS to the D DLC. Do the registration according to the immobilizer setup tool screen. After registration, verify all remote relay systems work normally. So this immobilizer setup tool on the HDS, hmm, that is what we need to do is apparently aftermarket tools like the, the Think tool, they need the ignition on and well, the ignition is not, it can't be turned on, which is crazy. Well, we might be out of luck here. Even if we download the HDS, the Honda Diagnostic System OEM software and use the pass-through, you have to be a vehicle security professional to be able to access the mobilizer function of the HDS. Not too surprising, but I was under the impression that wasn't the case. So right here on techinfo.honda.com we see what's available in the IHDS software suit and vehicle security professional is the only one that has access to immobilizer and PCM code and to become a vehicle security professional that's a whole nother can of worms and that's just uh, not what I do at least not currently so this car has to go to the dealer to get the BCM programmed we can only drive it there on the original BCM. I'm also, I might be banned from the Honda dealership still. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see if there's any way around this, but maybe call someone who does have the vehicle security professional license and have them remote in. That's a possibility, but... Hmm, kind of sucks. All right, so I, I call up my friend Keith DeFazio, New Level Auto. Uh, he works for uh, Opus IVS, and they do remote diagnostics programming. So I'm like, hey, maybe he, those guys can remote in and program these keys. And he said, for locksmith and mobilizer stuff, they can't even... He, they can't do it remotely, they can't do it over state lines for security reasons. So the dealer is the only option. However, he said, you can try this. Try turning on the ignition power manually. Instead of using the BCM, since the BCM is immobilized, we can manually energize these accessory and ignition relays and then plug in the scanner and try to program the keys you know, using the regular mobilizer function. So let's do that. Let's take a look at the wiring diagram and see how we can, we can safely power up this car. Okay, so on the wiring diagram, this is the power distribution. And in the under dash fuse relay box, we have ignition 1A relay circuit, accessory relay circuit, ignition 1B, and ignition 2. And all the controls go down to the BCM. So, here's the BCM. So whenever the BCM pulls these wires down, these, ener these relays will be energized. Okay. Actually, I'm not sure because the other side also goes to the BCM. But anyways, power or ground side switch doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Uh, we want to energize these relays. So I found these wires on connector G 
on the under dash fuse relay box G4, G5, and G14. And those guys live right here. You can see I have them back probed. So three controls. So the middle one's accessory, and the right one is, um, let's see here. Accessory circuit is controlled by green wire on G5. Then G4, the white wire, controls ignition 1A relay and ignition 1B relay. And finally, ignition 2 relay is G14. This one just powers up heated steering wheel and other accessory stuff, which we don't really care about, but uh, still, uh, I tied into that control wire just in case. So let's measure the voltage on the circuit right now, and then carefully we can pull it. You know, if, the, if it's high, it's looking for a ground on this wire, we can pull it down through a test light and see if the ignition turns on. If the voltage is high to begin with, or I'm sorry, low, then potentially we need a power and a ground for these relays, but I'm not exactly sure. Let's do a voltage measurement before messing with these control wires. Okay, so the voltage on these relays is low. We push the key, it stays low. So, what do we do? Can we try to pull it up with a little test light? I don't think it will harm anything. So test light, let's go from battery positive and attach it to like the accessory wire, see if the radio comes on. All right, so all three relays now are fed by test light coming from power. And you can see that you don't need much current to turn on these relays. And we have, everything's lit up. So let's try to log in here, program these keys. We have all kinds of issues and the car's not happy, obviously. Let's see if we can talk to it. Okay, Odyssey, the VIN is correct, so that's good. And we'll go right into either Mobilizer or BCM. Now, the service function, we can try Mobilizer Keys Programming. Okay, very cool. Keyless access remote system and mobilizer, one push start. So let's try mobilizer. Okay, mobilizer setup. Okay. So, what are we doing here? Keys replace ECM, PCM repla replace. MICU, keyless, replace the mobilizer unit. I guess we did that because the BCM is the mobilizer unit. So we just want to register two keys. Turn the ignition switch off. And the only way to turn the ignition switch off is to unplug our test light from here. So off. Uh, everything's still on. How do we? Oh, off. Okay. Turn the ignition switch on. Guess we have to do it this way. Communicating, please wait. Turn ignition switch off. OK. 
Okay, turn the ignition switch on again. Okay. Turn the ignition switch off. Turn the ignition switch on. Input VIN. Well, I guess I'll input the VIN. All right, so there's the VIN. Okay. Yes. Turn the ignition switch off. Turn the ignition switch on. Please wait. Turn the ignition switch off. Ignition switch on. Please wait. So I don't know, it's just stuck here. It says communicating. I really don't know how long to wait. Okay, so now an immobilizer system check we have. E1, initial registration of immobilizer unit is not completed. Possible failures, a key was not registered. Try to register keys by using a replace immobilizer unit. Oh. Okay. So he wants to tr try to do that again. I'll try it again. It says the registration of immobilizer codes has failed. Turn the ignition switch off. Okay. Turn the ignition switch on. What was our info? System check. He was not registered. Try to register keys by using a replace immobilizer unit. All right, so we got a new trouble code. System check B1 ECMPCM is not registered. Possible failure ECMPCM is not registered into the keyless access ECU. We replaced the keyless access ECU, but not the ECM. Try to register the ECMPCM by using replace ECMPCM. Communication was not good between EC and PCM and the keyless access ECU battery voltage low. Okay. Alright, so under the mobilizer menu, let's try to replace ECM PCM. Turn ignition switch off. Ignition switch on. All right, so it said ECM registration is complete. Check all keys. We'll start the engine. Turn ignition switch on. Well, so the remotes work. <laughs> We're definitely not starting the engine. Ah, we got another weird code. C3, knob ignition is not registered. We saw this once before. <sighs> Replace knob ignition. B1. Interesting. I wonder what that was. EEPROM error. <sighs> System type.
Destination China. <laughs> Interesting. All right, so I reinstalled the original BCM, and since the whole system was reset, the keys were not programmed. So I'm like, oh crap, is this van now a beached whale until we get it to the dealer? So I went through the exact same procedure, replaced the uh, immobilizer unit, it went through the steps, then said it failed, keys not registered, then you have to go to the one touch, this one PS, one push start system. Uh, to registration and then just basically start from scratch when you say keys all keys lost register two remotes then the mobilizer light kept blinking but I had control of the power so the first few steps I had to do the manual way energizing the uh, you know those relays through the test light and then, uh, once the immobilizer unit, or the BCM was recognized, the button started working, and then the last thing you had to do was go in here and back into immobilizer, And immobilizer info system check. See now it says normal, but before it said B1 ECM PCM not programmed. So then you hit replace ECM PCM, and that learns the immobilizer codes from the BCM into the PCM, and then everything's happy. The red light doesn't blink anymore, and the vehicle starts and runs. So my question is. The eBay BCM, why couldn't we do this exact same procedure? Is it a bad used module? I, I think it could be. You know, is it from a crashed vehicle or... I have no idea, but we couldn't even get the push button to work with the replacement, you know, eBay BCM. This one, it works, but just sometimes it decides to turn on on its own. So I wasted about one, two, three, four, maybe five hours playing around with this cart. Now obviously I can't charge the customer for five hours, but this is how you learn. You go in there, you play with the scanner, you try everything you possibly can, and we kind of did a full circle, but hey, at least the van is still running. So I didn't make it any worse. That kind of is kind of a relief. So I'm just gonna tell the customer, Hey man, I'm sorry, we're, we're going to have to get a brand new BCM to make this van reliable and not drain the battery because the replacement didn't even work. So who's going to pay for all that time? I don't know. <laughs> we'll split it. But you just have to be upfront and honest. And if we get this van fixed, we'll do a follow-up. If not, that's how it goes sometimes. So I wish I had a brand new Virgin BCM to install and try, you know, the ThinkTool Pro is it's still the most capable scanner out of all the ones I have and it basically reprogrammed the original BCM successfully. So that's, that's interesting. But the, you know, the replacement, the button never worked, it just, it never responded something was really wrong with that unit I think that's it for now thanks a lot for watching and hopefully we'll do a follow-up see you next time bye bye well I hope you enjoyed the struggle with the 2018 Honda Odyssey ghost self turning on ignition issue uh, update. So it's been over two months now since the owner took back the vehicle with the original BCM installed, original keys programmed, and he has had absolutely no issues since. 
zero glitches. <laughs> How do you explain that? What you know? What in the process did I do to at least temporarily fix this car? It must have been poor contact at one of the like a thousand pins on that little module. I mean, it had like five bulk connectors on it. I did a visual on everything. All the pins looked fine. Connectors look clean, no water intrusion, no anything. The car is not acting up anymore. As my key friend Keith DeFazio would say, FM. You know what that stands for. Magic, right? So that's that's the follow-up. Um, uh, I, I don't know what the takeaway is here. I guess if you have weird electronic glitches like this that have to do with these smart modules, first plan of attack is disconnect them, spray some deox on the connectors, reconnect them, clear all the codes out, and see if that takes care of the problem. I mean, it doesn't cost anything to do that, and it just might fix it, apparently. Um, with the programming procedure, uh, <laughs> sometimes, uh, you know, people ask, how do you, you know, where do you get the instruction manual for the Think Tool Pros? How do you know how to do all these functions? Well, that's how. You just go in there and you try all the functions and see what they do. That's the only way to learn, really. Will you mess something up? Uh, there's a small chance, but you just, you just have to dive into it. Take notes. See if the procedure is repeatable. You could see that you know the, the programming procedure for these keys was not very straightforward. You have to go into the mobilizer and then replace the immobilizer unit and then replace ECM PCM to sync the two then the one push start with the push button but once I got the procedure down we could program the original BCM back to the vehicle and the keys work perfectly so something must have been wrong with that eBay replacement because it did not respond to the push button whatsoever um, yeah that's that's the end of this uh, case study hope you enjoy that one uh, don't come across too many cars that are this kind of mysterious and you, you kind of have a feeling what the problem may be, but there's no definitive test to say, yes, 100% your BCM is bad. Apparently, whatever we did fixed the issue, so the thought process was you know spot on. The BCM is the controller for all the, the relays and stuff, but... What was the actual root cause? I'm assuming it must have been a poor connection somewhere, not power or ground, but it has like literally probably close to a thousand little pins on there. So, um, so that's that. Uh, also, forgot to mention, some people might ask, how much did you charge the customer for all this stuff? Diagnostics, programming, and reprogramming. I'll admit, I only charged them three hours total for the initial diagnosis and then installation of the BCM and one programming. So obviously I spent at least twice as much actual hours on this car but education is not free. It's either time or money or both. So um, the time I spent on it was in no, you know, it was not a waste of time by any means. We definitely learned a lot about what the car, you know, how to manually bypass the start stop button that was cool <laughs> with a test light you can turn on these relays uh, and that was the only way to get the scanner to talk to the you know the car before it could recognize the key so it's kind of a like how do you do programming without turning the key the car on because it doesn't recognize the key well there you go it, it worked um, yeah crazy stuff with these new cars and I'm sure there's a lot more to come